Hello YouTube, it's Bobby aka Paginator and I'm here with a little Scholastic book haul. So Scholastic is a service provided mainly to school teachers where you can order books for very reasonable prices and you also build up class points that you can use to purchase more books or other items from their bonus catalog. And I had a little order come in the mail and I thought it'd be fun to just kind of share that with you. If you don't know, um, Scholastic does mostly paperback books. There are two that are hardback in here and considering that I only ordered seven things and two are hardback that's actually kind of a lot for them because most everything that they do put out is paperback versions of things which I'm fine with because most of them are going into my classroom library anyway so the first one I have is from the desk of Zoe Washington by Janae Marks this has been getting a lot of hype in the middle grade book world it's about Zoe who likes to write letters um, it says, Zoe Washington isn't sure what to write next. What does a girl say to the father she's never met? She hadn't heard from until his letter arrived on her 12th birthday. And who's been in prison for a terrible crime? A crime he says he never committed. Could he really be innocent? So the person that she likes to write letters to is apparently her birth father. And he is incarcerated. So that means that Zoe is determined to find out the truth and perhaps she'll find out that yes he's innocent or perhaps she'll find out no he's lying he did actually commit this crime um, we also have an element of baking in this book because it says everyone thinks Zoe's worried about doing a good job at her bakery internship and proving to her parents that she's worthy of auditioning for Food Network's Kids Bake Challenge it's been Zoe's dream to become a star baker and she can't afford to mess anything up her neighbor and best friend Trevor would have been her confidant through all of this, but Zoe's not speaking to him anymore. She'll have to figure this out alone. There's something very comforting about books that have baking in them. I don't know why. Maybe it just makes us think of comfort food and like childhood treats that parents or guardians would make for us or I don't know. The next one I have is Hide and Seeker by Daka Herman, and this is one I heard about um, a while ago from um, a book training for teachers, and this is a play on the old Hide and Seek game. It says, Justin knows that something is wrong with his best friend. Z went missing for a year, and when he came back, he was different. Nobody knows what happened to him. At Z's welcome home party, Justin and the neighborhood crew play hide and seek, but it goes wrong, very wrong. One by one, everyone who plays the game disappears, folding to a world of nightmares come to life. Justin and his friends realize this horrible place is where Zoe had been trapped. All they can do now is hide from the seeker. One of my students read the library's copy of this book, and they told me they will never think of hide and seek again in the same way. I'm curious. Next I have Limelight by Solly Raphael and I apologize if I'm not saying that name right. This um, writer is an, a 13 year old award winning slam poet and this is a collection of their poems. My 8th graders recently did a poetry slam and it was very interesting. Um, some of them were not really poems but also still interesting. and. I thought it would be kind of fun for them to see someone who does this a lot. The next book is The Land of Cranes by Ada Salazar and she is an award-winning author and if we take off the dust jacket we've got a bunch of birds embossed on the front cover which is fun. So this says nine-year-old Batita knows she is a crane. Poppy told her the story even before her family fled to Los Angeles to seek refuge from cartel wars in Mexico. He says that Batita and her family are cranes that have returned to their promised land, but one day Poppy is arrested by Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, and deported. Batita and her pregnant mother are left behind on their own, but soon they are also detained and must learn to survive in a family detention camp. So this is going to be very topical. It is also a verse novel, so I can always get my kids to pick up verse novels, even if they are um, about people outside of their culture. If it's a regular prose novel and it's got, let's say, a Hispanic person on the cover and they're not Hispanic, they don't really want much to do with it. But verse novels, they'll usually pick up no matter what because 
they're easy to read. I'm trying, you guys. I'm really trying to get my kids to read outside of their own cultural experiences, but uh, we're at that point in the year where I'm kind of over the fight. I don't know. We'll pick it up again soon, I guess. Up next, we have Shuri, a Black Panther novel. This is by Nick Stone. I will read anything that Nick Stone writes. Not to mention that it's a Black Panther novel. Love it. And can we just look at this? Purple ink on the pages. Who wouldn't love that? This is, of course, about Shuri. And the little blurb on the back says, The heart-shaped herb source of the Black Panther's incredible powers for generation after generation is dying. Without it, the legacy of the Black Panther and the safety and prosperity of Wakanda are in jeopardy. While tribe leaders argue frozen in disagreement, the youngest member of the royal family takes matters into her own hands. Shuri, war warrior, inventor, and younger sister of T'Challa, the Black Panther, has disobeyed the commands of her elders and left her homeland to root out the source of it, this ecological crisis. But the truth she uncovers could pose a greater threat than she or any of her countrymen could have imagined. And then we have The Last Shadow Warrior by Sam Subiti. This is my other hardback in this collection. And we have the title that's embossed there. It's kind of hard to see. Um, some cool looking characters on the front. I'm digging that red hair just flying all over the place like Merida from Brave. This tells us. 12-year-old Abby Beckett is proud to come from a long line of elite Viking warriors known as the Acer. It's her life's goal to hunt the monsters called Grendels, just like her mother did before she died. There's just one small problem. No Grendel has been seen in centuries, and the Viking elders want to disband the Acer forever. After a mysterious attack on her home, Abby is forced to take refuge at Vale Hall, a secret-filled school in Minnesota, where nothing's quite as it seems. When she tries to alert the elders that a Grendel is after her, they accuse her of making up stories for attention and claim her mother did the same. Des desperate to protect her family and clear her mother's name, Abby goes on a dangerous quest to discover the truth. But with time running out, she quickly realizes that someone at the school is trying to stop Abby's progress and destroy the Acer for good. So these titles that I picked up are all essentially middle grade titles, um, which is good because in my classroom library, I try to, um, or I have been trying to incorporate more middle grade because I've been a little YA heavy in the last while. But anyway, I do have one more item that I got to order because Scholastic is really good at supporting teachers. If you spend a certain amount, you get a certain amount to spend. So I didn't have a very big order, but I did get a $5 to spend. And so I got this set of adhesive magnet dots. So you can stick these onto things and they become magnets. And so you can stick them on the whiteboard or whatever you stick magnets to, your fridge, whatever. And I like to use these um, because the kids love it when I have fun magnets on the board like I have one that's the picture frame on the door in the TV show Friends you know the yellow frame and I have some Johnny Depp character frame uh, magnets and my fridge in my classroom is just covered in magnets of all kinds of fandoms and nerdy things so fun 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 maybe I'll make some of my own magnets to add to the board all right, so that was just a quick little haul, and uh, I know most of you won't order from Scholastic because it is mainly um, for teachers, but sometimes it's fun to just see other ways of getting books. So I will wish you a wonderful, magical, and bookish day. Happy reading. Adios.